our friend uh, Coach Red Pill, Gonzalo Lira, is alive. He has been presumed dead twice now. He was under house arrest in uh, Kharkiv for, I want to say, over a year. And he is being released. Um, he's playing this up that he's like fleeing the country of Ukraine, but he's really just leaving. And he's asking for political asylum in Hungary for whatever reason. I don't know why. In a new country over like Serbia or something. Um, as far as I'm concerned, they can keep him. Uh, but Coach Red Pill is alive. He looks like shit. His family is gone. They, uh, I think his wife divorced him. But Russia Today published this article saying, U.S. Chilean journalist describes torture in Ukrainian prison. Gonzalo Lira has reappeared three months after his arrest by the SPU, which is the federal police of the Ukraine. Uh, uh, Ukrainian federal government, I should say. Uh, Chilean-American blogger Gonzalo Lira arrested in Ukrainian by the Ukrainian intelligence in May on charges of pro-Russian sympathies. Uh, re- actually, it was not... He was not charged for liking Russia. He was charged with uh, uh, propaganda crimes. Reappeared online on Monday and told a sordid tale of beatings and extortion while awaiting a show trial. I was tortured in two of the four cells I was in by other prisoners. Lyra posted in a 25 tweet thread on Monday evening, noting that all torture in the pre-trial detention center was outsourced to the inmates. I got a cracked rib in my first cell, but it wasn't too bad. The worst stretch was in the fourth cell. From 1 p.m. on June 21st until 7 p.m. the next day, for 30 hours, two inmates tortured him and at one point used a toothpick to scratch the whites of my left eye while asking me if I could read if I still just had one. One of the torturers was allegedly reprimanded for bruising the 55-year-old blogger's chest because the instructions were to leave no marks. Um, he's saying that he's about to leave Ukraine and seek political asylum in Hungary. Lira posted photographs of the documents laying out the charges against him, suggesting that he was being imprisoned over social media posts and YouTube videos. He said in one video in particular got the authorities' attention was Ukraine a primer. His explanation of the background of the current conflict with Russia, which blamed Kiev for provoking it. Um, according to Lira, he was beaten and tortured because the security service of Ukraine figured it could extort him for all his savings, amounting to some $100,000 when factoring in confiscated computers and phones. All those 8K digital cameras, drones, and uh, Alienware laptops, gone, seized, put put into the trenches in uh, the Donbass. Um, told he would be found guilty and sentenced to five to eight years in a labor camp in his upcoming trial, Lyra decided to flee Ukraine and seek asylum in Hungary. He wa- he literally walked through a border checkpoint. He didn't flee. He wasn't like hiking over the mountains north of Odessa and Tiraspol, uh, to Prenestrovia. He he literally just drove across the fucking border on his motorcycle that he still had. You think if you're gonna steal something from somebody, you take his fucking motorcycle? It was like a Shiny new Harley Davidson, I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> um, I'm posting this just as I'm getting the border checkpoint. He tweeted, if you don't hear from me in the next 12 hours, well, I'm on my way to a labor camp. Wish me luck. He credited the Chilean embassy for any care he received in jail, noting that the U.S. embassy called me three times but gave me nothing but support. Empty, pro- empty bromides, I assume you mean promises. He also suggested that the U.S. would extradite him back to Ukraine because Acting Deputy Secretary of State Victoria Nuland hates my guts, or so I'm told. Uh, probably because she's a woman, and you say women are dogs. Yeah. The SBU detained Lyra on May 1st, accusing him of producing and distributing materials justifying the armed aggression in Russia. A judge ordered him to stay in jail pending the trial. The first time SBU detained Lyra in 2022. Uh, he was released without charges after a week, presumably due to public pressure. Um, I actually don't think that uh, he has tweeted since then, so he might be dead. I might be wrong. Maybe he did try to cross the border and they, they killed him. He's doing labor now. He's sentenced to the mines. 
he will mine coal because the uh we need steel for for Ukraine. So he'll be mining coal until he's dead, like in RuneScape. Uh, Elon Musk took note of Gonzala and said, troubling posts. He's got Elon Musk on his side. Good to hear. Jean-Francois Garapes, a beautiful move by coach. Hungary, a much better dating market than Ukraine right now. Unless you're looking for a lesbian grenadier, wishing him luck. And uh, Interest uh, posted this lovely, lovely movie poster for Gonzala. CRP Lyra is The Fugitive, a bicycle, a seized YouTube, a frozen bank account. The chase begins. Um, yeah, I mean, on one hand, it's funny to make fun of Coach. On the other hand, it's pretty fucked up to, like, detain people for saying you deserved it. I mean, I've said a lot worse. <laughs> um, I don't know. I do think he's a bit of a grifter, though. He could be telling the truth. He could not be. Nobody will ever know, I suppose. He will make, dude, dude. When he gets out, he's gonna have so much material for Wilshire Boulevard. It's gonna be, the, it's gonna be a fucking blockbuster. When Wilshire Boulevard comes out, it's gonna be the most gripping tale based on a true event. Written right across the title. All CRP had to do was leave Ukraine. Here's here's his folly. Here's the here's the the. If you're gonna take humor from this, here's the humor. He was so convinced when the war started, because he was out there the first week that um, Russia had invaded Ukraine in in Kiev. In like the government, like hotels that government people were staying at talking aloud like in the middle of a room full of you know reporters and and politicians saying ukraine is pigs yeah and everyone was looking at him bemuddled by the befuddled by the fact that this man is sitting in the middle of this fancy hotel saying yeah russia did nothing wrong and the ukraine skis are pigos yeah and they're just like staring at him in shock disbelief and he's just running his fucking mouth like a retard in this in this very public setting and he really thought that when he took his train to kharkiv kharkiv would be under the russian flag ukraine would be reduced to a rump state with nothing um with nothing uh, east of the Dnieper River under their control within a week. And then when um, the Ukrainian forces took back Kharkiv, he was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and then they arrested him immediately and, like, removed him from the city, I'm pretty sure. So, he, I mean, the, the folly of Coach Red Pill is that he really thought, he really truly believed his predictions where the Russian decapitation shit was going to go off without a hitch. And then he would just be, he would be on the, the Putin side of the, the, the battleground. And then he would be a Russian hero. He would get the, uh, Soviet medal for socialist labor or some shit. And he would be a highly regarded hero of the people of Russia. And that's not what happened because <laughs> his prediction was wrong. So I don't know. we're going to laugh at that. You're laughing at anything. Laugh at that. Um, Okay, so let's coach. There's more. Oh, this is just a side by side picture. This is coach. Oh, God. When was this? I want to say this is like when he first. I think he's in his apartment in Kharkiv in this. So, and he moved to Kharkiv. God, I want to say a little bit before I did. So, like in 2017, 2016. And he, this is him 2016. I, I probably about 50 in this. And this is him at 55. Man, that motherfucker been chugging some bad borscht. He needs to find a no, new source because that shit might have some uh, Chernobyl radiation in it. <laughs> it's causing him to turn to the Crypt Creeper in, in, at a rapid pace. Yeah, the wall, dude, it's true. 
Men age like milk. You know how it is. You have you have a Chilean stud like this, and then he he hits fifty, and boom, you got a fucking disaster on your hands. And this this guy is what Nick Fuentes thinks that he'll be, knocking up a sixteen year old with no issues. You think they? I'll, I'll be. 55 i'll be at like my peak and then i can date a 16 year old and it'll be great it'll work out don't worry about it it'll be, it'll be fine <laughs> thank you for watching this clip this is the cac remember to like and subscribe